I've returned to the Learning the Art of Electronics hands-on lab course using the Analog Discovery 2 and I'm in section 6L8 as in 6 Lima 8. Let me slide the book over here a little bit so you can see what we're what we're looking at. And this is a complementary symmetry output circuit. It's this particular one is using MJE 3055s and it's using plus and minus 15 volts. I'm going to use a slightly different circuit. This is a circuit that I used in some previous videos having to do with feedback and distortion. Specifically in numbers 149 and 150 and actually it goes back even a little earlier than that because this is the class AB amplifier circuit that I uh, also talked about in some earlier videos. But if you would like, uh, I'm going to be repeating a little bit of what I talked about in 149 and 150, at least in the early part of 150. And so let me show you a couple of changes that I've made to this circuit. One is the positive and negative supplies are 5 volts, and I've done that so that I could use the supplies from the analog discovery. I'm using a 3904 and a 3906 instead of the MJE, uh, which are, of course, higher power transistors. The 3904 and the 06 are, are small signal transistors, but for demonstration purposes, they work fine here. And it cuts down on the amount of, uh, on the load that I put on the supplies for the analog discovery, which, as I pointed out in an earlier video, is important if you're only using the USB power. So, fundamentally, the way this circuit works is a signal on the left is capacitively coupled to an operational amp. And for those of you that haven't any familiarity yet with op amps, just assume for right now that this is just an amplifier that takes that uh, signal and puts it through a 470 ohm resistor into this output circuit. Now, I've got a switch that allows me to switch from local feedback to global feedback, and I talked more about that in uh, number 149. But we'll be doing that because what we're trying to do is look at the capabilities of the analog discovery in a circuit like this to measure things like uh, distortion. So, the fundamentally, the op-amp provides some gain, and then the output stage supplies uh, current gain. I should have said the op amp provides voltage gain and the output stage provides current gain to drive a load. Now not shown out here is a capacitively coupled load and the output here is this same point here. In other words, it allows me to use global feedback, which I'll talk about a little bit in a minute. But fundamentally, I'm starting out with this circuit, but with these diodes shorted out. What that does is it makes this output stage a Class B output stage. A Class B stage means that each half, that is each transistor, conducts for half a cycle. But because the transistor ha requires a minimum voltage to turn on, it, uh, with, without the diodes, you get a significant amount of crossover distortion. In other words, the input signal or the signal from the output of the op amp coming into this output stage has to rise a little over a half a volt before it begins to turn on this uh, transistor. 
Similarly, it has to drop a little more than a half a volt below zero before it turns on this transistor. And that uh, gap is produces what's called crossover distortion. Crossover because you're crossing over from the positive driver to the negative driver. And when we look at this on the uh, analog discovery here in a second, uh, you'll see this a little better. So just keep in mind when I say I uh, have these diodes shorted, there's just a jumper across these. Later I'm going to remove those jumpers and show you how that this stage performs a whole lot better. Because with those diodes in, it becomes a class AB stage. Class AB stage means that we are slightly biasing this transistor on and slightly biasing this transistor on so that when the signal goes crosses zero, say in the positive direction, this transistor turns on almost right away. Similarly, when it goes negative, this transistor turns on almost right away. In other words, we eliminate that gap that causes a lot of the crossover distortion. So let's take a look now at the analog discovery and how we can measure these various things. Now we have the analog discovery waveform software and at the top is the scope. Below that is the spectrum analyzer. Over to the right is the waveform generator in the lower right. And then above that are the power supplies. You notice the power supplies are set to plus and minus 5 volts, and I'll zoom in on these in a little bit. And the master enable is on. The uh, waveform generator is set to generate a 1 kilohertz uh, sine wave at 100 millivolts, that's peak to peak. The spectrum analyzer is set to go from 10 hertz to 50 kilohertz. And the scope, channel 1, is the input, is set to 50 millivolts per division. And channel 2 is set to 500 millivolts per division. So the first thing that I'm going to do is show you how the uh, global and local feedback change the crossover distortion. And if you want to watch this, this segment here, same one over here, same over here, this is the crossover distortion. That is, if you notice the input, the yellow is a fairly uh, uniform sine wave. But the output has this big discontinuity in it, a big gap where the output isn't responding to the input at all. It's just remaining at zero. That is the crossover distortion because we have the diode shorted. Now, let's go to global feedback. And once again, uh, if you want more on feedback, go back to uh, the my video 149 and 150. I'm just for here using it to illustrate the capabilities of the analog discovery. So we're going to go from local feedback to global feedback. You notice that the amount of distortion is uh, reduced quite a bit. But quite a bit won't get you a very good grade on, uh, on a technical report. People want to know how much did you reduce the distortion. So, we're going to see how we might do that using the analog discovery. But, in, before we do that, I want to show you another feature that you can turn on. If you go over to the view in the scope, the view, and you uh, click on Add XY, you will see a, a, an XY depiction. And that is basically displaying channel 1, that is the input, along one, in one direction, and the output in the other. 
Now I'm going to go back to local feedback, in other words, the higher distortion, and this time watch the XY display. You notice that the, 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 the dead gap has gotten much wider. So one of the things we can observe on this is that the uh, uh, feedback, global feedback, reduces the effect of the class B amplifier, but not, doesn't completely eliminate it. Now let's go to the worst case local feedback and now let's remove the shorts across those two diodes. That's the short on one diode and that's the short on the other diode. Notice what has happened. Now don't pay attention to the spectrum, we'll look at that in a second. But the, the output is now looking very much like the input. And on the XY graph we see that there is a pretty good linear relationship. Now let's go to global feedback. You notice there it gets even better. The, the little gap between the two, let me switch back again, local, global. And by the way, the slight difference in gain is because I'm using 10% uh, resistors, so it's not really precise. You can obviously put a, a pot in there and adjust the gain so that there'd be absolutely no difference between local and global feedback. But we're just illustrating the analog discovery here. So once again, Local feedback, a little wider. Global feedback, a little more fidelity. But once again, as I said, saying a little more fidelity once again won't get you much of a grade on a technical report. We want to know how much. And for that, what we're going to do is turn to the spectrum analyzer. Now, in the analog discovery, to run the spectrum analyzer, you cannot run the scope and the spectrum analyzer at the same time because they use the same electronics. So we're going to have to stop the scope and start the spectrum analyzer. Now you may notice that we only have a single point here on the spectrum. Now let me go to local feedback and you notice that some distortion begins to appear. Now suppose we want to measure that distortion. How would we do that? Well, we once again go to the view and go to measurements. And over here we get a measurement window. We click on add and we want trace to and we want harmonics. I'm sorry, dynamic. And we're going to turn on THD. Add that. And now we have about 54, minus 54 dBC. That dB means, uh, of course, decibel, and C means reference to the carrier. In other words, to the fundamental. And the fundamental is this, this uh, very small, but, but tall, thin, fundamental here at the uh, 1 kilohertz. What it is doing is it's giving us a quantitative reading of how much harmonic distortion there is. In other words, these harmonics, what do they add up to? Well, they add up to about minus 54 dB relative to the carrier. So now let me go to local feedback. And you notice that the total harmonic distortion goes to minus, well, 61 or so, uh, 60, 61, somewhere in that range. And you notice that the uh, most of the harmonics become almost invisible in this display. This gives us a quantitative distortion figure. Now, what I'm going to do is reinsert one of the diode shorts. In other words, I'm going to convert it to a class 
AB B amplifier. In other words, one side will be operating as an AB and the other side is the class B. Let me do that and I'll be right back. Now you notice that we have all sorts of harmonics here. We'll come back and look at the scope in a second. And notice that our harmonic distortion has increased to minus 32. By the way, the, the smaller the negative number, the higher the distortion. So in this case, the distortion is minus 32 uh, dB relative to the carrier, which is about twice as bad in decibels. And remember, decibels are, are logarithmic, so it's a whole lot worse in terms of distortion. Now let's go to global feedback, and you notice that the figure went to 19 dBc. You also notice that some of the harmonics disappeared. Let me switch again, and this time pay attention to this display, and especially to the second harmonic. You notice how the second harmonic jumps up. In this one, but the third harmonic is much higher. When I switch to local feedback, the second harmonic tends to disappear, but uh, we get more harmonics. And our total harmonic distortion there is 32 with local feedback, and with global feedback is minus 19. So what is the purpose of all of this? Well, it's to demonstrate that the analog discovery not only has the capability to show you what's going on in the circuit, but it also has the capability to give you quantitative measurements. I encourage you to play with the measurements, not just in the scope, but also in the spectrum analyzer, because what you'll find is that you can do a lot of very sophisticated measurements. Even just a few years ago, a total harmonic distortion measure, measurement device, the cheapest one you could buy that I'm aware of, it was the uh, Hewlett Packard 2015 THD, which cost uh, around $2,000 or $2,500. And you can now get those on eBay for uh, or five hundred dollars, but they're still quite a bit more expensive than the analog discovery. And yet the analog discovery can do THD measurements and a wealth of other things that even just a few years ago most uh, hobbyists and certainly most uh, students couldn't even begin to afford. So I hope this gives you some idea of the capabilities and how you can use instruments like the Spectrum Analyzer and their measurement capabilities to not only see, but also to quantify what is going on in your electronic circuits. Hope this has been informative, maybe a little bit uh, entertaining for those of you like me that are entertained by nerd things. But in the greater uh, sense of things, I hope that this series is giving you an appreciation for what a nice little instrument the analog discovery is within its frequency limitations, about 30 megahertz, you can do an awful lot. Furthermore, because it's such a small uh, instrument, and let me pan over here to the uh, to the breadboard. But with this tiny instrument and a tiny breadboard like this. All you need is a uh, computer, and of course most students have a, a laptop computer these days. You can do experiments in your dorm room or uh, in a makeshift lab or, or who knows, maybe even in the, in the lobby uh, if you want to impress your students. Probably won't impress too many of them because they're probably also double E students like you are and they just will realize you're showing off. But at any rate, have some fun with the analog discovery and hopefully these videos will uh, give you some appreciation for, for how it can be used. Once again, look forward to some more and in the meantime, have a nice day.